you know, we've, we've got uh, quite a few students in building science at Auburn. And, um, you know, in addition to the sort of foundational uh, skills that we help them develop, uh, we also look to technology uh, to help improve process. And, um, and we look for our graduates to be able to take some of that into the field when they graduate. You know, you don't have to go back very far where construction layout, um, you know, there was no EDM. Or right. Or a little before that, there was no GPS available, right. you know, to the civilian market. And, um, um, and today, the, uh, these guys have got all kinds of different e equipment to use. And, and I'm, I'm real, real excited to hear more about this, this visual layout that's going to take, uh, it's going to take construction layout to the next step, to the next level. Show us, show us how this, you know, sort of functions and how it's different than a, you know, the late or the prism that we use use now. Yeah, so this is pretty cool technology. It kind of blows me away uh, when I seen it. So really, uh, each one of these spheres are unique, and this is, has a camera on it, and it has the camera technology to be able to track and read these dots on this ball. So when they make this sphere, um, they do a scan of the sphere and they geo reference each one of these red dots. Um, so now when the camera's looking at it, the technology inside of it is doing the math on the geometry of these points, right? So it knows each dot is unique, right? It has a unique location on this. So it knows which dot it's shooting. So if it's tilted, now it knows that geometry is tilted, right? Uh, and if so it's consequently, plumb, it knows where the point is. Yep. And then with the, with the, with the combination of knowing the height, because it has auto height as well. So it knows what elevation I'm at based off of these white stripes right here. So another cool camera technology is it's reading the white stripes closest to the sphere. If I was to raise this up another level, there's another set of white stripes in the inner pole and it's gonna read them and it knows how high it is. Uh, there's three heights. There's this height, there's two meters, which is like six foot six, three quarter, yeah. or there's a what we call an H3 position where you could take this sphere and basically wedge it between the tip and the pole, and that's the H3 position. So now it's reading these stripes. When it's down here, to read these stripes, and now it knows it's on the lowest setting, right? Gotcha. So almost like an auto height. I don't have to punch in my the elevation of my rod. So it does still have an EDM inside the unit. So the okay. EDM is still taking measurements to the center of this ball, but the but the camera is actually recognizing the red dots uh, to recognize which way it's turned, which way how much it's tilted. And you only have to yeah you, you only have to be able to see three big dots and three small ones. So if half of this was blocked behind a column, it'll still read it. Huh. Once I hit start, ask me what do I want to start doing? You can always switch back and forth. Am I trying to measure something or am I trying to lay something out? Doesn't really matter which one you choose. You can always flip back and forth. And then there's my file. It's going to go ahead and start leveling the instrument. Got it. So it'll spin around for about ten seconds, and then it'll give me the level check. So now it's capturing a panoramic photo. It's kind of fast though, but <laughs> should take three pictures. It's a pretty wide camera view. Uh, and then it's gonna stitch them together and now you have a picture that you can use to, to drive this thing. Oh, wow. <laughs> so pretty cool. And then wherever I touch on this picture, the unit's gonna turn. So if I need that unit to face uh, something, so I picked that column right there. Yep, just touch it and you'll and watch the unit turn there. Then I guess the first thing we need to do is establish control or figure out where the machine is yeah. in the space. And so what are the options for that? Yeah, so right up here it has a red setup button because we just turned the thing on, it leveled, and next thing we got to do is set up. So three options that we have to set up is that we can use control points to set up. Okay. So if we had control points, surveyor points in the room or in the space that we have, uh, we can, can go. Can you do points. that with the stick? With you the, can. With the, okay. Yep. So you can walk over with the stick, basically just like a traditional uh, method of with, with the robots. Yeah. Is put it on the point and but take it, a shot. But it doesn't have to be plumb. Correct. Yeah. Yep. That's the advantage. Uh, he sold me to that. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Uh, Anybody can run it. I can run it. We're going to go over on the V targets here in just a second, but I got V targets placed around the room. Okay. And they're basically targets that are. Think of a QR code. So the camera will read them, recognizes the number of it, and it will actually store them for you. So we'll just, you know, once we do get the V target set up, we don't have them yet. You have to do a setup first. Yeah. And then you can capture your V targets. Now, will these V targets, let's say I set this room up and I take this V target to another target, will it 
interfere there or I need to use new V targets in every room. They reckon, so once it stores these V targets, it'll recognize the geometry between them. So if there's a, if, if I, if I was to collect these three V targets and I put another one up over in the other room, uh, it may pick it up and read it, but it's not going to include it in the setup because it doesn't recognize it being part of your control system, okay. right? Uh, now, right. certainly, if you put one in another room, you can capture it and then, you know, have it. Which one do you want to show us first? Uh, the as-built walls, because we don't have any, per se, you know, uh, survey control in the room. Okay. Uh, so we're going to use as-built walls. What this is, I'm going to take two shots on this wall and two shots on this wall, and it's going to orientate myself to the room. Okay. Uh, so I'm just right. going to jump right into there. Uh, pretty simple. It's uh, it's telling me right up here at the top what to do next, right? So it's telling me to start or select the first line. So this this is this blue line here is is the perimeter wall, uh, and then this line here is that wall over there. Okay. So I'm just going to go ahead and select this line right here, and uh, say I put it right on that right on that wall right there. I'm looking for it. Where is it? I'm sorry. It's uh, right right on the corner of that window. Drywall would obviously be better, more dense, but it got that sure. one. Okay. Uh, so then we can swing over here and let's try this guy here. Okay. Right. Like that one. Maybe it's a different studs. Uh, then, yeah, now I got two of two shots on, on that wall. Okay. And I'm going to go over here and I'm going to select the other wall. That's this one? Yep. That'd be that one there. All right. And then we okay. can swing. All right, if I do it? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So now we got one of two. We just need one more along that same line. And obviously, if there's a little bit of distance between them, the better, right? The better, yeah. Yep. Just spatially to spread it out. All right, let's try that. So I captured that one. All right. So once you get your two shots and two shots made, do I want to go ahead and, and, and buck myself in for an elevation right now? Maybe we might as well pick up a. Yeah, we can call this floor 100 if we wanted to. Yeah, let's just do that. Uh, so if we had a benchmark, you can point the laser right on the floor. Let's call the floor at the doorway a datum of 100. Okay, sounds good. So we can go ahead and hit set height. And then right here, I can enter a value or pick a point from the map and use that point okay. elevation. But we're going to enter value. Then we're just going to type in one. But then I just take my shot. So I only change my target back to any surface. And then I can hit measure and take that shot. And that's uh, instrument height now? So this is calculating the instrument height of 104, 2, and a 16th. So that'd be the center of this unit. Yeah. So HI is 4 foot 2 and a 16th. Yep. Above fenced floor. Then you hit OK, and now you're ready to pretty start smooth, isn't it, really? measuring, laying out, doing whatever it is that you need to do. OK. And everything's going to be calculated within that 3D space. OK. Well, so uh, can we, what can we, can we lay out like these anchor bolts or? Yeah. I mean, how do you, what's the next step? Change our target. So the next step, we're going to change our target. And we're, going to, we're going to use the vSphere okay. for that. So we're going to click it from our list. It's going to change the target. And if I want to lay out that anchor bolt, I can zoom into it. Oh, wow. And then I can select that circle, and that gives me four options for points to pick. So the quadrants or the center. Pick the middle. So I can pick the center one, and then I just hit, I just press layout. And it tells you? It tells me how to get there. So yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to blow up to my camera view. Yeah. Uh, and I really just need to get this into the camera view. So I'll, oh, okay. if you want to. Can just, I try? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's what I was. What, keep your eye on the camera because uh, you'll see how fast it snaps to it and it just really just put it right in the right in the field of view. Hear it? I hear it. Oh wow! So now it's locked on. Now it's going to start tracking you. Yep. So I need. So to if you want to go, if you want to go back to your uh, to your data, um, we know that that's you, and you're trying to get to there. Everything's relative between you and the in the station. Just okay. like a traditional robot. So if you're looking at the, the unit, uh, it's basically telling you up here how far to go. But Gotcha. The directions are 
Yeah, let me let me kind of see what you got there. So if I'm looking at the oh, at, at I the unit, see, I see. So I need, I'm, I need I'm to following. Go, I need to go back one foot eight, right? And then I need to go to the left four foot. So again, I'm just I'm just moving this thing from the blue dot and trying to get to the yellow dot. Once I get to the yellow dot, kind of turns into like a bullseye view, and then right there I'm within a quarter inch. Being good, low. There's tolerances mm -hmm. that you can put in here, so I got a quarter inch in there. Okay. So once I get within my defined tolerance, it's going to turn green. You got to go back that way a quarter inch. Yeah, it takes a few times to get used to yeah, it. Yeah, no, I get it. Um, yeah, once I mark my point or whatever, I just tap the screen. Or I'm sorry, I hit stop. And then I can go start laying out a, another another point if I need to. Uh, there's another way that you can lay out. You know how we were, everything was relative between you and the robot, yep. forward, back, left, and right. Yep. Uh, there's another way. So let me let me just jump right into this one. Let me lay out this anchor bolt right here. So I select a circle, touch the center, and I'm going to go to options, and I'm going to lay out facing the point. So when you do this. Now it's turning direction. First thing you got to do is give it a reference first, right? So I usually do the bubble. I usually face the machine. So I'm just going to give it a little bit of plumb here. And this is a tutorial page. So a lot of tutorial pages in here. Okay. Uh, it kind of tells you some of the next steps. Uh, and then I got to set a reference. So I'm just going to face this to the robot and go ahead and hit set. Now my reference is set. Now it's giving me an arrow here telling me which way to turn, oh. right? So my point is going to be down here. So basically I am turning to the point and it's telling me how far to walk to get to that point. Right. So yeah, that's, it kind of takes that. That's a lot better. <laughs> yeah, I was about to yeah. say, I was getting lost in that. But, but no, that looks good. But yeah, uh, it just basically just tells you, again, assuming that you're you're the guy holding the rod, mm -hmm. if you was to grab it, yeah, and basically you're just going to rotate Here, you and, got it, huh? and just stay... Uh, don't cover oh. up the yeah there you go it's like nine feet straight that way oh i should that's probably too far right just guessing <laughs> huh. that puts you within a quarter I, I know it's when it's green, I know it's within a quarter. I don't know what it's actually saying. Okay, 16th, zero, whatever. But Pretty close. Yeah. And based off of that floor right there, this is 5 sixteenths lower. So you're actually recording your elevation as well based off that benchmark. So. Hmm. So, and, and so really, um, I mean, other than weather condition, like, you know, sunlight or whatever, I mean, I think this could be just as valuable or more for footings and, oh, yeah. you know, yep. I mean, outside. Yep, right. Yeah, this is just one the example. Tolerance, the tolerance yeah. is great, but I'm just saying it. I mean, outside, if you're laying out, you know, spread footing templates or dig lines or whatever, I mean, this, this would be. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I mean, if you're just coming out and checking points, you can go ahead and hit store right there. And it's going to store the location of that. And what it's telling me, so... The same position difference is a quarter inch. Height difference is five sixteenths. You want to accept that, so you go ahead and hit store. And it's gonna it's gonna keep a record of all the points, uh, and, and you can spit that out as a report and, and say how far they are. So not necessarily laying out, but if you're going to as built where they're at, right? They give you the deviations from where it should be to where you shot it. Right. Pretty cool. How about that? 